looking at the night sky. Who built a tomb for the sun god? The ancient Egyptians thought that their kings were the sun god, Re, who had come down to earth. They buried kings in huge tombs called pyramids, maybe because the pyramid shape pointed at the sky. Is it true Stonehenge was a primitive computer? No, but in the 1960s, an American scientist called Gerald Hawkins said it was. He thought Stonehenge was built to work out when eclipses would happen. Who built a stone circle for the sun? No one knows exactly why Stonehenge, a huge stone circle in the southwest England, was built by Druids over 4,000 years ago. Its doorway could have framed the sunrise on the longest day of each year. Who thought the sky was a goddess? The Egyptians thought the night sky was the arched body of a goddess called Nut. Today, we know that Nut's body marches the view of the Milky Way from ancient Egypt. Who first wrote about these stars? The Babylonians were the first to write down their finding from studying the stars around 5,000 years ago. They noticed that stars seem to form patterns which we call constellations. The Babylonian Empire was roughly where Iraq is today. Is it true the Babylonians were math wizards? Yes. At first their findings about the night sky were based on looking and guessing. By around 500 BC, the Babylonians used sums to predict exactly when even such as eclipses would happen. How do we know about the first astronomers? The Babylonians didn't write on paper like we do. They wrote on clay tablets, so fragments have survived scientists called archaeologists dig in the ground for clues about ancient peoples such as the Babylonians. Do the ancient Babylonians saw the same night sky as we see? The Babylonians didn't see the same night sky as us. There were no twinkling satellites and the stars were in different places because our solar system had moved since then. Who thought the sun was as wide as a ruler? The Greek thinker Heraclitus thought that the sun was just 30 centimeters across and that a new one was made each morning. So even though the ancient Greeks were clever, they didn't get everything right. Who named groups of stars? In AD 150, the Greek astronomer Ptolemy wrote a book about the stars, describing 48 different constellations or star groups. He named the group after characters from Greek myths such as Perseus, the hero who rescued the princess Andromeda. We still use Ptolemy's names today. Is it true people once thought that the earth was flat? Yes. Even up to the 1500s, most people believed this. They thought that if you sail too far, you could fall off the edge. Why do stars make patterns? Constellations are the patterns that bright stars seem to make in the night sky such as a cross, a letter W, or the shape of a person. The stars look close together, but that's just how we see them from Earth. Really, they are scattered through space and nowhere near each other. How the night sky is divided The night sky is divided into 88 different star patterns. Nearly 50 were first described 2000 years ago. What is the zodiac? For astronomers, zodiac includes the 12 constellations that the sun passes through during a year. We can't see the sun doing this though. The sun's light is so bright that we cannot see the constellations during the day. Which stars make a hunter? Orion is constellation named after the legendary Greek hunter. Lots of stars make up the shape. Regal is the brightest and makes one of the hunter's legs. The next brightest is Betelgeuse, which shines a reddish color. Is it true astrologers are specialist astronomers? No, 
the zodiac signs that astrologers use for horoscopes have the same names as the zodiac bands in astronomy. They don't match with the astronomical constellations though. How did sailors know where they were going? Out at sea, there are no landmarks. In the Middle Ages, sailors had special instruments that used the position of the sun and stars to tell them where they were. These included compasses, astrolabes and cross staffs. Who made the first astrolabes? The first astrolabes were made 1500 years ago. Indian and Arab astronomers used pocket-sized instruments called astrolabes in the AD 500s. Is it true astrolabes only worked at night? No, you could use the position of the sun instead of the stars when you were sailing during the day. You looked at its position compared to the horizon. How did an astrolabe work? An astrolabe had two discs, one with a star map and the other with measuring lines and a pointer. You compared them with the sun or a star and the horizon to work out your position. What is the pole star? The only star which doesn't appear to move is above the North Pole. Sailors to move tell where they were by looking at the pole star. It's lowest in the sky at the equator. Who made the first telescope? Hans Lippershey, a Dutchman who made spectacles, probably made the first telescope in 1608. He noticed that if he put two lenses at different ends of a tube and looked through them, objects seemed to be nearer and clearer. Is it true Newton saw a rainbow in his telescope? Yes. Isaac Newton noticed that the edges of objects seemed colored when you looked through a telescope. That's how he began to work that clear white light is made up of many different colors. How does a telescope work? The lens or a curved piece of glass at the front end of a telescope gathers light to make an image of an object that is far away. The lens at the back magnifies the image so it can be seen more clearly. Who put mirrors in a telescope? Isaac Newton was the first person to make a mirror or a reflecting telescope. He replaced the front lens with a dish-shaped mirror at the back. The mirror reflected the image onto a smaller mirror and then into the eye. How far the telescopes can magnify images? Telescopes magnify images so much that you can even make out Saturn's faint rings which are about 1.3 billion kilometers away. Is it true the church accepted that Galileo was right in the end? Yes, the church eventually agreed that the earth and other planets traveled round the sun. But they didn't do this until 1992, 350 years after Galileo's death. Who first used a telescope for astronomy? Galileo started making telescope in 1609, not long after Lippershey made his. Galileo was the first person to realize how useful a telescope would be for looking at the night sky. Because he could see more clearly, he made lots of important new finds such as discovering four of Jupiter's moons. Who explained the seasons by showing the earth? Copernicus explained the seasons by showing that the earth goes round the sun and also spins at the same time. Copernicus explained why some times of the year are warmer than others. Where do astronomers put their telescopes? Observatories are building where astronomers go to look at the sky. They house the most powerful telescope on earth. The telescope are usually kept in a room with a dome-shaped roof. Observatories have other instruments too, such as very precise clocks to help keep accurate time and records. Where is the best place to build an observatory? Where you will get the clearest view. 
most are built away from city lights mountains tops are best of all because they poke above any clouds that might spoil the view is it true the greenwich observatory houses the most telescopes no the kit peak national observatory in arizona usa as the most optical telescope one of them the mayall telescope in 4 meters across do the ancient people have observatories yes the ancient babylonians used observatories they did their stargazing form step towers called ziggurats how can a telescope see through the roof it doesn't have to an observatory's dome roof is specially designed to slide open at night so that the picture through the telescope is not distorted by looking through a window the telescope can be pointed at any place in the sky how deep is space early astronomers thought that all the stars were the same distance from us forming a simple shell around the earth now we know that some stars are relatively close to us and others are trillions of kilometers away do the galaxies move galaxies move so quickly they have different colors the light waves from them change just as a fire engine siren sounds lower after it zooms past we use the color to measure the galaxy speed are there candles in space not really but we can see how far away a galaxy is by the brightness of a special type of star called a standard candle the further away from the galaxy the dimmer the candle how do you measure the distance to a star watch the tip of your finger as you move it towards your nose the closer it gets the more cross eyed you become astronomers can tell the distance to a star by measuring how cross eyed a pair of telescopes has to be to see it is it true we measure how far the stars are in kilometers no they are so far away that we use light years instead as light year is how far light travels in one year 9461 billion kilometers who made the first radio telescope radio telescope are like giant satellite dishes that pick up invisible radio waves and similar waves instead of light rays unlike light radio waves can travel through cloud so radio telescope can be built just about anywhere an american called grote robert made the first one in 1930 how long the telescope can be a telescope can be 8000 kilometers long the very long baseline array stretches across the usa it has 10 different dishes and produces the best quality radio image of space from earth yet which are the most powerful radio telescopes the ones that are made up of several different radio dishes such as the very large array in new mexico usa the vla has 27 dishes each 25 meters across scientists compare the findings from all 27 dishes to get super accurate results where is the biggest radio telescope the world's biggest single dish radio telescope was a built in puerto rico in the caribbean about 40 years ago it is 300 meters across so it would take you more than 10 minutes to walk around the edge of it is it true only 10 astronomers are allowed to use the vla no it is used by over 500 astronomers a year some study our near neighbors in the solar system while others peer away beyond our galaxy to other and deeper space what is a gravity telescope a gravity telescope uses laser beams to measure its own length as a gravity wave passes through earth from space it stretched the telescope by less than the width of an atom four huge gravity telescopes were built at the end of 1990s can we see black holes we can through a gravity telescope although light can't escape a black hole gravity can 
When a black hole swallows up a star, for example, there is a ripple of gravity through space. Gravity wave telescopes spot the ripples. How long is the biggest gravity wave telescope? The biggest gravity wave telescope is 4 kilometers long. No one knows yet what new things astronomers discover. What is the weirdest telescope? The Super Kamiokant Telescope near Tokyo is just a big tank full of very pure water but a deep underground. Very sensitive cameras detect teeny weeny particles called neutrinos zooming through the earth by recording microscopic flashes of light in the water. Is it true neutrinos have a dark secret? Yes, scientists think that the universe is full of something heavy which they call dark matter. Neutrinos may be a part of it. Are there telescopes in space? Yes, the first one went up in the 1960s. Space is a perfect place for looking at the stars. The sky is always dark and cloudless, away from Earth's pollution and wobbly atmosphere. The stars shine steadily and brightly instead of twinkling as they do to us on Earth. Are there observatories in space? Yes, some observatories use powerful gamma rays which can penetrate all the gas and dust in the galaxy to show us what is happening in its center. The Compton Gamma Ray Observatory was launched into space by the shuttle. Which telescope is in orbit? The most famous is the Hubble Space Telescope which was carried into orbit by the Space Shuttle Discovery in 1990. It circles the Earth every 90 minutes about 600 kilometers above us. It beams radio signals of information to astronomers on Earth. How does the Hubble run on? Hubble runs on sun power Hubble's two paddles or solar panels. They gather energy from the sun and change it into electrical energy. This energy is used to focus the telescope and beam data home. Is it true telescope can look back in time? Yes, because of the time it takes X-rays to travel through space, Chandra can see Khasars as they were 10 billion years ago. What's better than a powerful telescope? Seeing for yourself in close-up but it's too dangerous and expensive to send astronomers deep into space. That is why space probes are such important tools. Space probes are fitted with cameras. They beam back close-up photos of faraway planets and comets. What is Chandra? Chandra is a billion times more powerful than the first X-ray telescope. If telescope keep improving at this rate, we will be able to see the farthest edges of the universe in 30 years time. Is it true a probe found a watery world? Yes, the Voyager 2 probe photographed what might be water on Jupiter's moon, Europa. If there is life out there, probes will probably find it first. Could we build very large arrays in space? Scientists are already testing a cluster of satellites that fly in perfect formation using laser beams. The same technology will be used to create a string of small satellite telescopes making one huge eye in space. Could we build an observatory on the moon? The dark side of the moon would be a perfect sight. Always pointing away from the earth, it is shielded from man-made x-rays. But building there would be very expensive. Space and Astronomy Solar System What is the solar system? Solar means of the sun. The solar system is centered around the sun, the shining ball in the sky. It includes the family of nine planets orbiting the sun as well as the moons of these planets and smaller objects such as comets, asteroids and bits of space rock. The powerful pull of an invisible force called gravity from the sun stops these bodies from flying off into the deepest space. Is it true? 
all planets have one moon no our planet earth has one moon called the moon but many of the planets have more than one our neighbor mars for instance has two only the two planets closest to the sun mercury and venus have no moons at all do other planets have rings saturn is not the only planet with rings saturn's rings are the easiest to see but jupiter neptune and uranus have them too saturn has seven main rings called ringlets how hot is the sun in deserts here on earth heat that has traveled 150 million kilometers from the sun can be hot enough to fry an egg the sun's surface is a super hot 6000 celsius and its center or core is even hotter do you know that the sun is a star the sun is a star yes a gigantic ball of burning gas it has been shining for about 5 billion years why must you never look at the sun not even sunglasses fully protect your eyes from the sun's dangerous ultraviolet uv rays uv can burn your eyes and make you blind if you want to see the sun safely ask an adult to show you how to project its image onto a sheet of paper is it true the sun has spots yes the sun is not the same color all over some areas of its surface are darker these spots are little pockets that are slightly cooler of course sun spots are only little compared to the sun some grow to be as large as the jupiter the biggest planet in the solar system when does the sun go out when there is a total eclipse this happens when the moon's path takes it between the earth and the sun and the moon cast a shadow across the surface of the earth what does mercury look like planet mercury looks very like our moon it's about the same size and it's covered in craters where bits of space rock have crash landed on its surface the biggest crater is the calories basin which is about 1300 kilometers across Mercury also has huge plains, rolling hills, deep gorges, chasms and cliffs. Is it true? Mercury is the smallest planet? No. Mercury is only about a third the size of the Earth. But Pluto is even smaller. If you could put them on the scales, it would take 21 Plutos to balance one Mercury. Is Mercury the hottest planet? Mercury is the planet closest to the sun, but its neighbor Venus is even hotter because it is clouds to keep in the heat. What is the weather like on Mercury? Mercury doesn't have any weather because it has no air and hardly any atmosphere. That means there are no clouds to shield the surface of the planet from the baking hot sun during the day or to keep in the heat at night there is no wind or rain on mercury either which is the fastest planet mercury is the fastest planet mercury zooms around the sun in just 88 days at an incredible speed of 173000 kilometers per hour that makes it faster that any space rocket ever invented when is a star not a star when it's a planet venus is sometimes called the evening star because it's so bright it's one of the first points of light we see shining as it gets dark planets don't make their own light they reflect the sun's light is it true Venus is bigger than the Earth? No, Venus is a fraction smaller than the Earth, but not by much. Venus is about 12,104 kilometers 
across, whereas Earth is about 650 kilometers wider. Venus' mass is about four-fifths of the Earth. How can a day be longer than a year? A day is the amount of time a planet takes to spin on its axis and a year is the time it takes to travel around the Sun. Venus spins on its axis very slowly but orbits the Sun more quickly than Earth. A day on Venus lasts 243 Earth days but a year is only 225 Earth days. How Venus got its name? Venus is named after a goddess. Venus was the name of the Roman goddess of love and beauty, just right for the planet, which many people think is the most beautiful object in the sky. What is special about our planet? As far as we know, Earth is the only planet in the solar system that has life. As well as warmth from the sun, the other main ingredient for life is liquid water. Earth has plenty of water. In total, it covers about three quarters of the planet's surface. Is it true there was life on Earth from the start? No. When Earth first formed, it was extremely hot and there was no oxygen. Over millions of years, the planet cooled, oceans formed and oxygen was made. The first life on Earth appeared about three million years ago. What does Earth look like from space? It looks beautiful, blue with swirling white clouds. Astronauts in space spend most of their free time gazing at it. They can even make out cities when they are lit up at night with twinkling lights. Do you know our Earth is a magnet? The Earth is magnetic. At the center of the Earth is a core of a molten metal called iron which makes our planet like a giant magnet. This is what pulls the needle on a compass towards the magnetic north pole. Why does our sky go dark at night? Like all planets, the Earth is spinning as it orbits the Sun. When your part of the planet is facing away from the Sun, its light is blocked out. At the same time, it is daytime for people on the opposite side of the Earth. Why does the moon change shape? It doesn't really. It's a ball shaped just like the Earth. But as the moon travels around the Earth, you see different amounts of its sunlit half. It seems to change gradually from a crescent to a disk and back again. Why does the moon have so many craters? Because it has been pelted by so many space rocks and has no atmosphere to protect it. One of the biggest craters called Bailey is nearly 300 kilometers across. You can make out some of the craters using a good pair of binoculars. What is the dark side of the moon? It's the part of the moon that we can never see from Earth. The moon takes the same time to orbit the Earth as it does to spin once. This means the same side of the moon always faces away from the Earth. Do moon has gravity? You can jump higher on the moon. The moon's gravity is much weaker than Earth's. This means you would only weigh about a sixth of your Earth weight there and you should be able to jump six times higher. Is it true? There are seas on the moon. Yes and no. There are dark rocky plains and craters called Maria, Latin for seas, but they don't contain water. The first astronauts to visit the moon landed on the Sea of Tranquility. Does Mars have ice at its poles? Yes, its south pole is mostly dry ice, which is frozen carbon dioxide gas. At the north pole, there are many frozen water mixed with the frozen carbon dioxide. There may be frozen water underground on Mars too. Which is the red planet? Mars was named after the Roman god of war because of its blood red color. 
The planet looks rusty red because its surface is covered with iron-rich soil and rock. There are no seas on Mars and it is very cold. Is it true? There is life on Mars. No, or at least there is no sure sign of any. But long ago, Mars had flowing rivers of water, so there could have been life once, but there may be fossils buried underground. Do you know about Mars moons? Mars' two tiny moons, Deimos and Phobos, are not round like our moon. They look more like baked potatoes. They might have been asteroids that Mars captured with its gravity. Do Mars have volcanoes? There is a record-breaking volcano on Mars. Olympus Mons is about 600 kilometers across and towers over 25 kilometers high. It is the solar system's biggest volcano. Long ago, it spurted out runny rivers of black lava. Which is the biggest planet? Jupiter is so big that all the other planets in the solar system could fit inside it. If it was any bigger, it might become too hot in the middle, start to glow and turn into another sun. Is it true? Jupiter's stripy? Yes, the planet looks like it's wearing a giant pair of pajamas because of its bands of cloud. They are made of frozen crystals of water, ammonia and other chemicals. What is Jupiter made of? Jupiter is one of the planets known as the gas drains. About 90% of its made of gases called hydrogen and helium. At the center of Jupiter is a small rocky core about as big as the Earth. What is the size of the red spot in the Jupiter? You could fit two Earths inside the great red spot which is about 40,000 kilometers across. Where is the storm that never stops? Violent winds whip up storms all over the planet Jupiter but the great red spot is the largest. It has been raging away for over 300 years. Which world has most volcanoes? Jupiter's closest moon, Io, is orange and yellow. Because of the sulfur from all its active volcanoes, if you could survive the intense heat, you would realize that Io smells of rotten eggs. Which moon is bigger than a planet? Jupiter's moon Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. At 5,276 kilometers across, it is bigger than Mercury. Another of Jupiter's moons, Callisto, is a similar size to Mercury. Which moon might have life? Jupiter's moon, Europa, is covered by a thick crust of ice. The ice looks smooth like frozen water. But it also has a lot of cracks. Scientists think there is a liquid ocean beneath the ice and where there is water, there might be life. Is it true? Jupiter only has four moons. No. Galileo discovered the four biggest, Callisto, Ganymede, Europa and Io in 1610. Since then, astronomers have discovered 13 smaller moons as well, making a total of 17. Do you know the size of Saturn? It is the solar system's second largest planet after Jupiter. Its rings are 2,70,000 kilometers across, about twice the width of the planet. Are Saturn's rings solid? No, they look solid but they are made up of millions of chunks of ice and rocks. The smallest chunk are about the size of a golf ball while the biggest are about a kilometer wide. Do Saturn's rings have names? Not really, but scientists have given each ring a letter so that they know which one they are talking about. There are seven main rings of which the three brightest are A, B and C. 
How many moons does Saturn have? Saturn has at least 18 moons, but there may be more. The biggest is Titan, the second largest moon in the solar system. Titan is covered by clouds, so we can't see its surface. Is it true? Saturn is light enough to float? Yes, Saturn is made up of liquid and gas with a small rocky center. It is so light that there was an ocean big enough the planet would float on it like a boat. Which planet was found by accident? Uranus was discovered in 1781. The man who found it, William Herschel, was not expecting to find a planet at all. He thought he was pointing his homemade telescope at a distant star. How many moons does Uranus have? Uranus has at least 17 moons, but there could be more to discover. They are all named after the characters from English literature. The main ones are Oberon, Titania, Umbriel, Ariel and Miranda. Ophelia and Cordelia are the closest. Why does Uranus have warmer poles than the equator? The poles on Uranus are warmer than the equator. Because Uranus is tilted on its side, the poles are the warmest on the planet. Summer at the South Pole lasts 42 years. Why is Uranus blue? The bluish green is the color of methane, a stinky gas that makes up part of Uranus' atmosphere. The other gases in the air are hydrogen and helium, the gas we use to fill party balloons. Is it true Uranus was nearly called George? Yes, when Herschel discovered the new planet, he wanted to name it after the English king at the time, George III. In the end, it was called Uranus after the Greek god of the sky. Which planet is pulling Uranus? Astronomers knew that Neptune must be there before they saw it. They could tell something big was pulling Uranus and they were able to predict exactly where Neptune was, almost 4.5 billion kilometers away from the Sun. What's the weather like on Neptune? Very, very windy. Winds rip across the planet all the time much faster than any winds on the Earth. There are also a lot of storms on Neptune which show up as dark spots. This means Neptune's appearance is constantly changing. What is the temperature in Triton? Triton is one of the coldest places ever recorded. The temperature on the ice-covered moon is minus 236 degrees Celsius. That's just 37 Celsius away from being the lowest possible temperature in the entire universe. Is it true Triton is Neptune's only moon? No. Neptune has seven other moons, but Triton and Nereid are the main ones. Triton is the biggest it is 2,706 kilometers across, about four-fifths the size of a moon. Where would you find pink snow? When the gas nitrogen freezes, it looks like pink snow. There is frozen nitrogen at Neptune's north and south poles and at the poles of largest moon Triton. So from the sun, Neptune and its moon are bitterly cold places. Which is the coldest planet? Pluto is the coldest planet of all, which is not surprising, because it is usually the farthest from the sun. Inside, it is made up of ice and rock, and the planet has a thick layer of ice over the top. Is it true? Pluto was named after a cartoon dog, no, Pluto was the name of the Greek god of the underworld. Also, the first two letters of Pluto, P and L, are the initials of Percival Lowell, who first predicted a planet beyond Neptune. 
who found Pluto's moon. An American called Jim Christie discovered Pluto's moon in 1978. He called it Charon, which was his wife's name and also the name of the man who ferried people to the underworld in ancient Greek mythology. Is Pluto always farthest from the sun? Pluto is so far away from the sun that it takes 248 years just to orbit it once. But Pluto's orbit is a funny shape. For 20 years of its orbit, Pluto dips in closer to the sun than Neptune. When this happens, Neptune is the farthest planet in the solar system. What is the size of Pluto? Pluto is smaller than a country. Pluto is a tiny planet, the smallest in the solar system. At 2360 kilometers across, it is smaller than USA or Russia. Are there snowballs in space? Yes. Comets are balls of ice and rock. They go whizzing through the solar system, leaving behind a glowing tail of gas. As a comet gets closer to the sun, it gets hotter and its tail becomes longer. Some comets even grow a second tail. In the past, the arrival of a comet was thought to be a magical event. Can we see the comets that we have seen before? We can tell when comets will come back. Some comets follow a regular course, so we know exactly when we will next see them. Halley's Comet will next fly past the Earth in 2061. Are there any other planets? There are a lot of minor planets known as asteroids in our solar system. About 3500 of these lumps of space rock are orbiting the Sun. Is it true asteroids weigh the same as the Earth? No. Even if all the asteroids in the solar system were lumped together, the Earth would still weigh more than thousand times as much. Space Exploration Who made the first rockets? The Chinese made the first rockets about thousand years ago, but they were more like fireworks than today's space rockets. They were flaming arrows that were fired from a basket using gunpowder. Who can build rockets? You don't need to be a rocket scientist to build rockets. Lots of people make mini rockets as a hobby. There is even a yearly contest when people show off their latest creations. Is it true? The Thrust SSC a rocket powered car? No. Thrust SSC, the fastest car, has two jet engines. A jet engine could not power a space mission because it needs air and there is no air in space. When did the first liquid fuel rocket fly? In 1926, American Robert Goddard launched a 3.5 meter long rocket. It flew about as high as a two-story house, nowhere near outer space and landed 56 meters away. The flight lasted just two and a half seconds. Who built a rocket for war? Werner von Braun invented the V-2, a rocket missile used by the Germans in World War II. After the war, von Braun moved to the United States to help with the new American space program. Why do we need rockets? Rockets are important for space travel. They are the only machines powerful enough to launch things into space such as satellites, probes and people. All the parts needed to build space stations have been carried up by rockets. Which is the biggest satellite so far? The European Arian rocket could carry a fully grown elephant. Arian's biggest payload, cargo, so far is a satellite which weighed 4.6 tons. How fast can a rocket go? To escape from Earth's gravity, a rocket has to reach 40,000 kilometers per hour, almost 20 times 
faster than supersonic Concorde. Once it is out in space, the rocket drops down to around 29,000 kilometers per hour to stay in orbit. Is it true? Saturn V rockets were as tall as a 30-story building. Yes, at 111 meters high, the Saturn V was the tallest rocket ever made. Most of the rocket fell away once it has done its job. Why do rockets fall to pieces? Rockets are made in stages or pieces. Usually, there are three stages made up of the fuel and rocket engines. Each stage drops off when its job is done. It takes a huge amount of power to push a heavy rocket into space, which is the first living creature from Earth sent to space. The first living creature in space was a Russian dog called Laika. She made a seven-day journey in the space capsule Sputnik 2 in November 1957. Who was the first man in space? A young Russian pilot called Yuri Gagarin was the first person in space. He orbited the Earth in a small capsule called Vostok 1 on 12th April 1961. His journey lasted less than two hours. Who was the first woman in space? The first woman in space was a Russian too. Valentina Tereshkova made a three-day space journey in Vostok 6 in 1963. The first American woman in space was Sally Raid in 1983. Who took the first space walk? The cosmonaut Russian astronaut Alexei Leonov took a 10-minute space walk on 18th March 1965. To make sure he didn't float off, Leonov tied himself to his capsule. Is it true a chimp could survive a space flight? Yes, Ham was the first to try out the Mercury capsule in 1961. Despite travelling at 8,045 kilometers per hour, the chimpanzee survived the 16-minute flight. Which astronauts went to the sea? American astronauts returning to Earth landed in the sea and were picked up by helicopter. Their capsule had huge parachutes to slow down their fall and rubber rings so that they could float. How hot is the capsule when it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere? Capsules got extremely hot. When a capsule re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, its surface heated it up to 3000 Celsius, twice the temperature needed to melt iron. But they didn't melt because they were protected by a special heat shield. Who came down to Earth with a bang? Russian capsules landed on hard ground. The cosmonauts bailed out and parachuted down the last few kilometers. But even so, man broke a few bones. They usually had to spend months in hospital recovering from the landing. Who knew where astronauts landed? Machinery on board, a capsule was radio, linked to mission control, the people on the round in charge of a space mission. This meant people knew exactly where to find the astronauts, usually. Is it true Vostok 2 got lost? Yes, Vostok 2 was the capsule carrying Alexei Leonov, the first space walker. The autopilot machinery went wrong and the capsule ended up 1000 kilometers off course in a snowy forest. Who first set foot on the moon? The very first person to step on the moon was the American Neil Armstrong in 1969. He had down there in Apollo 11 with Buzz Aldrin who followed him onto the moon's surface and Michael Collins. How many moon missions were there? There were six manned Apollo landing on the moon and about 80 unmanned ones too. Apollo 17 landed the last astronauts on the moon in 1972. Is it true there are footsteps on the moon? Yes, there is no atmosphere on the moon, which means there is no wind either. Tired tracks 
and footprints in the dusty surface will be there for 100 years. Who first drove on the moon? In 1971, Apollo 15 carried a lunar rover. David Scott and James Irwin drove the battery-powered buggy over the moon's cratered surface collecting samples of moon rock. Is it true there is only room for five astronauts aboard the shuttle? No. The space shuttle was designed to carry eight astronauts but it can carry ten at a pinch. What was the first reusable spacecraft? The space shuttle was the first spacecraft designed to be used more than once. Not every part is reusable because it needs new rocket boosters for each flight. The shuttles have made over 100 missions into a space. The first was Columbia which blasted off in 1981. It orbited the Earth at about 27,840 km per hour, about 10 times faster than a speeding bullet. How many space shuttles are there? There are three space shuttles in use today. Discovery, Atlantis and Endeavour. The shuttle Challenger exploded shortly after the liftoff in 1989 and the shuttle Columbia disintegrated, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere in 2003. Shuttles are used for launching and repairing satellites and space research. How does the shuttle land? At the end of its mission, the shuttle drops its speed to break orbit on the opposite side of the world to the place it wants to land. Then it turns off its engines and glides like a bird landing on a runway about an hour later. Why do astronauts wear spacesuits? Spacesuits act like a suit of armor. They stop at astronauts' blood boiling in space and reflect the sun's dangerous ray. They have a built-in backpack containing an oxygen supply battery and cooling system. How astronauts are kept cooled? Astronauts are water-cooled. A system of tubes seen into the space suit carries cool liquid around to keep the astronauts' temperature normal. Is it true? Cosmonauts took off in their underwear? Yes, in the early days of Russian space travel, space suits were worn only for space works. Some cosmonauts just wore their underwear at taken off time. Do astronauts wear spacesuits all the time? No, they wear them for spacewalks and during takeoff landing or when they dock with another craft. The rest of the time, astronauts wear shorts and t shirts. How do you go to the toilet in a spacesuit? Astronauts often need to wear during takeoff. Women wear an extra absorbent nappy inside their suit. Some men prefer to do this too, but others wear a special sleeve that carries wear to a storage pouch inside the suit. What's on the menu in space? Astronauts either add water to waterless food or they eat ready meals such as stew or pasta. Canned fruit, puddings, biscuits, sweets and gum are all on the menu too. Is it true? Astronauts eat Freeze-dried ice cream? No. Astronaut ice cream sold in the shops is not really eaten in space. But on the MIR space station, American astronauts took out an ice cream feast to share with the Russian cosmonauts. Why doesn't the food float away? Everything floats about in space, so meals are eaten from tray stuck to astronauts' clothes. Drinks come in a cup with a lid and are sucked up through a straw. Do astronauts get space sickness? Some astronauts get space sickness. Floating makes many astronauts throw up. And if they're not careful, the sick flies everywhere. Luckily, the sickness wears off after a day or two. How do astronauts wash? The Skylab space station had a shower fitted with a vacuum cleaner 
to suck off the water but there is no room for a shower on the shuttle astronauts use wet wipes and clean their hair with rinseless shampoo is there any spider in space there were spider in space arabella and anita had a special mission on skylab scientists wanted to see if space affected how spiders spin webs which was the first space station the first manned space station was salute 1 launched in 1971 which had room for three crew it was meant to go into permanent orbit around the earth but its orbit was a bit too low what happens in a space station astronauts live in space stations for weeks or even months they do experiment and find out more about space they also do lots of exercise to stay fit and healthy is it true your bones get weaker in space yes this is not serious on short missions but no one knows what would happen if you spent a year in space which is the biggest space station the international space station iss is the biggest ever space station the first module was launched in 1998 and the space station's parts are being built by 16 countries who needs a toolkit in space astronauts need tools to build the hisis and repair satellites in 1993 a space shuttle crew repaired the hubble space telescope what is an mmu mmu stands for manned maneuvering unit it's like an armchair that carries an astronaut around in space when he or she is outside the spacecraft it uses 24 little gas jets to move backwards or forward up or down is it true the space shuttle has an arm yes it has a robot arm with a hand that can grip at the end it can be controlled by astronauts inside or outside the shuttle the robot arm is useful for picking up object in space Where astronauts are trained? Astronauts train underwater. Working underwater gives astronauts an idea of how it will feel to float in space. Water makes an astronaut's body move in the opposite direction when they try pull or push something, just as it would in space. How do astronauts talk to each other? Space is an airless vacuum that won't carry sound. Even if they were yelling, astronauts outside their craft wouldn't be able to hear each other, so they stay in touch by radio. Has anyone ever been to Mars? No, not yet. Anyway, the distance from Earth to Mars varies from 4 to 6 million kilometers to 400 million kilometers. Even at its closest, Mars would be a six-month journey away. Is it true Vikings landed on Mars? Yes. In 1979, two space probes called Viking 1 and 2 landed there. During their mission, they collected samples and took over 3000 photos. What used balloons to land on Mars? The Mars Pathfinder probe entered the Martian atmosphere on 4th of July 1997. It used a parachute and rockets to slow down and then a bundle of balloons inflated around it so that it could bounce safely down onto the surface where did the pathfinder landed in mars the pathfinder landed in a river although there is no liquid water on mars now the rocky plain where the pathfinder touched down showed signs that water had flowed there once Which robot explored Mars? The Pathfinder carried a robot car called Sojourner, which was radio controlled from Earth. It had a camera and devices for studying the soil and rock. Which was the first satellite in space? Sputnik 1 was the first satellite to orbit the Earth. It was launched by the Russians in October 1957 and took 90 minutes to circle the planet. Is it true a person could have fitted in Sputnik 
No, the satellite was less than 60 centimeters across, smaller than most beach balls. Sputnik was just a radio transmitter, really, but it was very important for space exploration. Can you see any satellites from Earth? Yes, you can see satellites moving across the sky when the sun is shining on them, but it's dark on the Earth. The best times to spot satellites are the two hours after sunset and the two hours before sunrise. How satellites are powered by the sun? Satellites are powered by the sun. Rocket power takes satellites up into orbit, but once they are there, they use special solar panels to collect energy from the sun. This is turned into electricity to power the satellite's batteries. Why don't satellites fall down? Earth's gravity tries to pull the satellite down, but the satellite speed as it orbits the Earth tries to fling it into space. Usually, the two forces cancel each other out, but there have been mistakes. Which probe snapped a comet? The Geotospace probe visited Halley's Comet in 1986 and took brilliant photos of the comet's rocky core. Even though Giotto kept a safe distance of about 600 kilometers, its special protective shields got covered in icy dust. Do you know there is a probe carrying message for aliens? A probe carries a message for aliens. The Pioneer 10 probe was fitted with a plague, just in case it's ever found by aliens. It shows a man and a woman and a map to show where Earth is in the universe. Is it true a probe was made out of junk? Yes, Magellan, sent to visit Venus in 1989, was made up of spare parts from other missions. Which spacecraft flew farthest? Voyager 2, launched in 1977, has flown past Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Now it is beyond our solar system, heading into interstellar space. Which probe was as big as a bus? The bus-sized Cassini space probe had another probe called Hygens on board. It reached Saturn in 2004. Cassini beams data back to Earth about Saturn's ring's moon and the planet itself. Is it true we could never breathe on Mars? No. We couldn't breathe in the atmosphere there as it is, but we could build airtight cities and grow plants there that would make oxygen for us. Might there be pirates in space? If we ever set up space mining stations, spacecraft would zoom about the solar system with very valuable cargoes. Space pirates might try to board cargo carrying craft to rob them. Will we ever live on the moon? There might be a moon base one day. The moon is only three days away and its low gravity makes it easy to land spacecraft there. It would be a good place for telescope because there is no atmosphere to distort the pictures. Is it possible building hotels in space? Yes, people are planning a space hotel. Holidays in space are not far off. There are plans for a donut shuttle space hotel using old shuttle fuel tanks as rooms. Will we ever live on other planets? It will take a lot more probe missions before we could consider building bases on other planets. But if travel to other stars ever became possible, the outer planets could act as useful petrol stations. Universe What is the universe? Every person, planet, star and galaxy is a part of the universe and even every empty space. The universe is the biggest thing that we have a word for. How big is the universe? The universe is too big to measure kilometers. Even if you could travel at the speed of light, it would take at least 15 billion years to cross it.
as far as we know. What is outside the universe? It's impossible to say. Scientists are still trying to guess by using clues left behind from the birth of our universe. They are pretty sure that there would be no time, distance or things there. Where are we in the universe? People once thought Earth was at the center of the universe. Now we know that Earth is one of many planets moving through space. It is hard to tell where we are because we can't see the universe's edges. Is it true there are more stars than people? Yes. As a rough guess, scientists think there are about 1.8 million stars for every human being alive in the world today. When did the universe begin? Scientists have argued about for centuries. At the moment, most people agree that universe began between 12 and 15 billion years ago. It all started with a mind-boggling explosion called the Big Bang. How hot is the Big Bang? The Big Bang was super hot. Scientists don't even bother writing out all the zeros in its temperature. They write 10 C, meaning 10 with 27 zeros after it. What was the Big Bang? It was a huge explosion that created all the mass and energy in our universe in less than a second. The effects of the blast are so strong that the universe is still expanding. Is it true you could see the Big Bang through a telescope? Nearly. Our telescopes aren't powerful enough yet, but we can already see light from the other side of the universe that began its journey after the Big Bang. What if the Big Bang happened again? It couldn't happen again in our universe, but some people think it may be happening millions of times, making millions of different universes. Only a few would last as long as ours. Most would pop like soap bubbles. Will the universe ever end? Some cosmologists People who study the universe believe that the universe will eventually stop expanding outwards. They think it will shrink back to nothing in an event called the Big Crunch. Is it true the universe might just fizzle out? Yes, if the universe keeps spreading out forever, it will get quite boring. After the stars have burnt out, there will be just lumps of rock and dust floating around doing nothing. Why would it crunch? The universe is still blowing up, but there are lots of heavy things in it. Just like a toy balloon, which is run off puff, gravity might pull the universe back to where and how it started. Will the universe stop expanding? The universe might go on forever. Some cosmologists think that the universe will never stop expanding. They don't think Gravity will ever be able to stop it, so it will just get bigger and bigger. Will I see the big crunch? Not unless you live forever. Even if the universe does stop expanding, it will take about another 15 billion years to collapse in on itself in a big crunch. What are star nurseries? New stars are born in star nurseries. Huge clouds of gas and dust known as nebulae or nebula if you're just talking about one. Nebulae are some of the most beautiful sights that powerful telescopes have ever revealed. How are stars born? The gases in the nebula gradually gather together into spinning balls. They spin more and more quickly until they get amazingly hot and a big blast called a nuclear reaction begins. When this happens, a baby star begins to glow. What are stars made of? Stars are mostly made of two gases, hydrogen and helium. Helium is the gas used to fill party balloons. There are lots of layers inside a star, with gases moving around in each one. Is it true you are made of stardust? Yes, 
everything in space including you is made out of elements such as carbon and silicon all of these were cooked up in stars which formed from the first matter in the universe which stars live together our star the sun is all alone but some stars called binary stars are in pairs they just seem to spin around each other very close pairs do one turn of this dance in just hours how long do stars shine for it depends very hot bright stars burn up all their energy in a few million years a star like our sun which is only medium hot can shine for billions of years what is a white giant white giants are really huge hot stars that appear to be white they can be 20 times bigger than a sun rigel is a white giant shining about 60000 times more brightly than our sun which stars are called dwarfs small stars are called dwarfs astronomers know that stars come in lots of different sizes to make it easier to describe the sizes they call big stars giants and little ones dwarfs is it true most stars are yellow no stars hotter than our sun often shine a bright pale blue while other stars can sometimes appear red or white only a few are yellow which stars go out with a bang really massive stars at least 8 times bigger than our sun die in an explosion called supernovas for a few days supernovas shine so strongly that here on earth we can see them during the day can we see supernovas only a few supernovas have been seen in our galaxy in the last 1000 years one visible to the naked eye was seen in 1987 in a nearby galaxy called the large magellanic cloud what is a white dwarf a white dwarf is a dying star its gas is burnt off and a planet sized white hot and incredibly dense core is all that is left over billions of years this fades and dies sirius b or the pup is a white dwarf what is a red giant a red giant is an old star that is swollen up depending how big it gets it might blow up or fade out astronomers think that our sun will grow into a red giant in about 5 billion years time betelgeuse is a red giant and is 500 times bigger than our sun is it true dead stars are also called black dwarf yes once a white dwarf has cooled and stopped shining it becomes a dead black dwarf What is the little green man? LGM stands for little green man. LGM1 is a light deep space that flashes 30 times a second. It is a pulsar, a tiny dense neutron star, the remains of a supernova that flashes out light and radio signals as it spins. Do you know neutron stars are heavy? Neutron stars are super heavy. they can just be 20 kilometers across but weigh 50 times more than the planet earth do all pulsars spin at the same speed no even the slowest spin about once every 4 seconds but the fastest whiz round many hundreds of times in a single second their incredible speeds are thought to be caused by magnetic forces left by a supernova What is a black hole? A black hole is a place in space that forms when a really huge star collapses. Everything around black hole is sucked into it like water down a plug hole. The force of gravity in a black hole is so strong that no thing can escape from it, not even light. Have anyone ever seen a black hole? No one has ever seen a black hole because Beams of light cannot escape black holes. Astronomers cannot see them, even with the most powerful telescopes. What is dark matter? Dark matter is what scientists call 
all the stuff in the universe that they know is there but can't find. They think it might be made of ghostly little particles called neutrinos. Is it true black holes turn you into spaghetti? Yes, scientists think that in the last moments before you disappeared forever in a black hole, the force of gravity would stretch you until it's pulled you apart. They call this being spaghettified. How do we know that dark matter is there? Scientists can guess how much matter is in the universe by measuring how galaxies move. This shows them that stars and planets only make a small part of the universe. The rest is invisible. What is a galaxy? A galaxy is a group of stars, dust and gases that are held together by gravity. Our galaxy is the Milky Way and contains about 100 billion stars, one of which is our Sun. Is it true all galaxies have names? No, each one that we detect is given numbers and letters, but only some, such as our Milky Way, are given a name as well. Galaxy comes from the ancient Greek word for milk. How many galaxies are there? No one knows for sure. There might be hundreds of billions of galaxies and new ones are forming right now at the edges of the universe. Are there different kinds of galaxies? Yes, each galaxy isn't like any other. Some are bright and some are dim. There are three basic galaxy shapes. Spiral, elliptical, and irregular. Of course, irregular just means no particular shape. What shape is a galaxy? A galaxy, the Milky Way, is a spiral one. Viewed from above, it looks like a giant Danish pastry with swirls of white icing. From the side, it looks more like two fried eggs stuck back to back. Which is the biggest galaxy near the Milky Way? Our galaxy has a twin. Andromeda is the biggest galaxy near the Milky Way. It's the same age and a similar shape, but has many more stars. What's at the middle of the Milky Way? The center is called the nuclear bulge. There is probably a monster black hole there more than a million times bigger than the Sun. Scientists call the black hole Sagittarius A. How big is the Milky Way? The Milky Way is almost too big to imagine. It would take the world's fastest jet, the Blackbird, about 30 billion years to cross the galaxy. Is it true we are near the center of the Milky Way? No, our solar system is closer to the edge, on one of the spiraling arms. Our sun takes 225 million years to go around the center once. Do galaxies stick together? Some galaxies are all alone in space, but others huddle together in clusters. Together with 30 other galaxies, our Milky Way and its twin Andromeda are part of the local group cluster. Are some galaxies cannibals? Some scientists think that Andromeda gobbled up other galaxies. It has a double center which might be the remains of another galaxy. One day Andromeda may eat up the Milky Way. It gets 300 kilometers closer to us every second. How many galaxies does the local supercluster contain? The local supercluster contains several thousand galaxies and is more than 100 million light years across. A light year is about 9,461 billion kilometer. What is a supercluster? It's a cluster of clouds of clusters. The local group that contains our Milky Way is a part of the cloud called the Keynes Venatici cloud. Together with about six other clouds of galaxies, it is a part of the local supercluster. Is it true we are part of the biggest galaxy cloud? In the local supercluster? No. The biggest is the Virgo 1 cloud, which contains a fifth 
of all the galaxies in the supercluster. It's pulling the other clouds in the cluster towards it. What is gravity? Gravity is one of the basic forces in the universe, like electromagnetism. It makes things with mass pull towards each other. More massive objects, such as the Earth, pull smaller objects, such as you, towards them until they stick together. Is the universe expanding evenly? No, the force of gravity stops everything from flying outwards. Lumpy bits of space become even lumpier, moving at different speeds. Gravity locks together little pockets of space and matter, such as galaxies. Is there any walls in space? Yes, there are walls in space. Galaxies aren't evenly spaced through the universe. They are arranged more like walls around emptier regions of space. One wall has already been measured. It's about a billion light years across. What is the great attractor? It's a strange little knot in space that has the pulling power of 50 million billion suns, but it's not a black hole. Is time the same everywhere? No. Time slows down when you're traveling very quickly. Brainy Boffin, Albert Einstein predicted this odd effect in 1905, but we only proved it a few years ago by sending a super precise atomic clock into orbit around the Earth. Could time stand still? Only if you traveled as fast as the speed of light, which most scientists agree is impossible. Some scientists think that time must stand still inside a black hole, but who would want to find out? What are called wormholes? They might be tunnels through space and time which connect distant parts of the universe. Scientists call these shortcuts wormholes. If light or even an object entered a wormhole, perhaps it would pass through incredibly quickly. It would be possible to travel billions of kilometers in an instant. Is time travel possible? Not as far as we know. If you could invent a machine which seemed to take you back or forward in time, it would probably be taking you to different universes. Is there anybody out there? We don't know. Life might be such a fuck that it only exists on Earth. But if scientists can find just another place where is life, we all know life is no accident and there could be millions of aliens. How will we find out? People around the world have joined the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. They spend their spare time on computers studying waves from space hoping to find alien messages. Do aliens know about us? It's unlikely. Humans have only been making radio waves for about a century so aliens would have to live very nearby to tune in. Is it true aliens have visited the Earth? Probably not. There is no proof that aliens have visited up. Even if they could travel at the speed of light, they would at least take four years to reach us from the nearest stars.